And Nick, um, how much would you say you guys like script the play time before a game and then game flow just like dictates play time? And I'm mainly, I guess, asking wide out running back wise. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, that's a good question, Kevin. Um, we have a plan that we go into the, each game with and like, hey, here's who we want on these certain plays. And, um, and so we, we definitely script it out like, here's who we want on this play. Here's who we want on this play. Here's the guys we want in on this play. But naturally through a game, um, you know, you, you sub because to keep guys fresh. And we feel, and we feel so confident in everybody in our, on our roster uh, that we're willing to do that. So that uh, it, it's, yes, we do script it, but naturally throughout a game, guys need breaks. And um, again, confidence in everybody that, that's going in. Zach Kiefer. Hey, Nick. Um... From all your time in San Diego with Philip, is you have one favorite Philip Rivers moment or favorite Philip Rivers story that sort of embodies him as a football player? Yeah, hey Zach. Um, I think just I can just think of so many times how how his toughness. You know, I think as coaches and then also the players too. They they everyone likes tough guys that are tough, right? Because they're very dependable. Um, they're going to play through the ups and downs of a season. So I can think so many times where, you know, the, the bumps and bruises that Phillip would have, um, you know, I, I think in the 2014 season, he was, he was going through some, some, I don't remember exactly, some injury things and just, he toughed it out. He was there each week and you really didn't even know if, you know, nobody even really knew that he was ever injured. I mean, it, unless it was on the injury, you know, unless it was on the injury report or anything like that. Um, Cause he's just so tough and he got any, he, any he guts through it. So I remember that being in the 2014 season, he was really, he really fought through some injuries and fought through some, the you know, bumps and bruises and, and played really well. Um, it's always exciting. I think, I think I'm always excited to see him after a, a touchdown because he plays with so much energy and so much juice and so much competitiveness. I mean, there was a lot of touchdowns. Obviously, when we were in San Diego, we had a lot of touchdowns together. But I guess I think about um, the Rams uh, when it was St. Louis Rams in 2014. Uh, he checked. He checked to a screen and, and hit a big play, and and we were all going crazy, and he was going crazy, and I, I vividly remember that that as well. Mike Chapel. I do like the hair, Nick. It's it's a good look. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. For for someone with your history with Philip, you know what he can do, maybe what he can't do, and probably what he shouldn't do. What do you expect from him this year, realistically? Yeah, I, I expect him to to be the guy that that leads the offense. Um, you know, we know how accurate he is, and we know um, how you know he's a great decision maker. He's accurate. He makes good fast decisions. So I, I expect that you know, I expect that out of him in the past game, getting us into the right protection call because he, you know, he he studies, he just he he's this guy studies blitzes and and the opposing team more than than anyone I've ever been around, getting us into the right protection call, getting us into the the right check um, in the past game, and then in the in the run game again, just running the show, uh, checking when he needs to, getting people in position to make plays. So I just I just expect I expect the same uh, from what I what I've you know obviously we have a lot of years and a lot of history with him and just I expect the same uh, Philip Rivers that that we we had when when we were in San Diego with the you know together. Phil B. Hey coach, thank you for your time. Hey Phil. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, JT and. Uh, and Pittman, um, maybe it's kind of a two-parter, but how do you balance? I want to get them touches and get them involved with just doing what you want to do. And how long do you think it takes a rookie to settle down and realize it's football? I've done it all my life. Don't get too caught up in everything else. Yeah, good question, Phil. The you know we definitely want. We know that they're through our practices and through our, obviously our film study on them coming out of college, we know they're playmakers. So 
just like any playmaker on our team, we want to we want to make sure we get them touches um, and get the ball in their hands. Right? We're when we get the when we get the guys ball in the hand, when we get those guys uh, a ball and a touch. You know, good playmakers make plays and, and get and get yards. So, you know, they're no different than they're no different than the other playmakers on our team. We want to get them touches because we know we know what they can do. And uh, as far as you know, as far as rookies coming into their own, I think everybody's a little different and every position's a little different, right? The, we know the game's different, right? We know, the, we know the NFL game's different than the college game. So Michael's not going to be quite as open as he was in, at USC. And um, Jonathan's not going to have quite as big a hole as he had at Wisconsin, right? Th those will close up quicker. So everyone takes – it's a little different for everybody. Um, what those guys have shown in practice, we, we practice so hard. Frank, Frank's such, such a good culture here. And we practice when we practice so hard that we're getting, we feel like we're getting good game reps in practice. That's how we, that's how we think we get better. Um, so, you know, hopefully that's helped them in their development. And I know that has helped them in the development. So it's not brand new for them uh, in the, in the live bullets there on, on uh, Sunday. Thank you, coach. Thanks for Andrew okay. Walker. Hey, Coach, with the three quarterbacks on your active roster and then Chad on the practice squad, can you give a little insight into how you'll handle that on a week-to-week -week basis? We've seen some teams who are utilizing maybe even an emergency guy who's not even there um, just, you know, in case he needs to come in in an emergency. But how are you guys kind of handling that quarterback position in this odd year? Yeah, good question, Andrew. Um, well, that, the, as far as the actives and actives, obviously that's up to Chris and Frank. Um, we just – you know, we're, we're just preparing all of them as, as if they had to play. And that's how, and that's really, honestly, that's how we're treating every, um, every um, backup and every practice squad player. Cause we know, we know, we have to have confidence in every guy and we do have confidence in every guy and as far as their ability, but we have to have confidence in their mental um, for preparation for the week to be ready to go. Cause it is such a unique year. Um, with with everything that's going on in the world, it's such a unique year that we just have to be um, we have to be ready um, for ev everybody's got to be ready like they're the starter. Do you do you temp do you uh, make the plan different than if you were you were going in there with Philip or if you were going in there with Jacoby? Sure, I mean you're not going to the, the playbook's not going to be quite as quite as big. So you know we we have to think through those things as coaches and. Um, and each guy has to be ready, ready to go in this unique year with, with COVID. And Sterling. Hey coach, uh, with no preseason tape this year, how big an advantage for you is it to have a 16 year guy like Philip Rivers who really can't be surprised? Yeah, good, good question. Good question. Can I, I think there's, there's no doubt that we can't obviously know what they've been, what they've been doing in practice. So it's going to be hard. No doubt, is it going to be harder to surprise Philip? He's been 16 years. How many how many plays a year? Let's just say a thousand thousand plays. That's a lot of that's a lot of plays. What 16 16,000 plays? So that's a lot of plays that he that he's seen and he's seen different defenses. So no doubt, um, we we feel like that's an advantage. But we we also know that we have to be ready for anything that they can throw at us, right? They they studied tape all off season and they. They probably put new new plays in in the off season, so we're going to have to be ready to adjust to anything they have. Um, fortunately, Philip Philip sees a lot, and he's seen a lot. And not only um, he may see you know he may see it right at the beginning, and if not, we'll we'll make adjustments as needed on the sideline. And and even with that, Philip's Philip's huge uh, being able to be there with with that because of how much how much experience he has. Bob Kravitz. Hi, Nick. Hey, Bob. Um, one thing you're not going to have to deal with this year is crowd noise. Um, I'm wondering how much of an advantage will that be to offenses? Um, and did you even bother this year with silent counts? I mean, even do you even prepare to, to operate with a silent count given what's going on this year? Yeah, good, good question, Bob. I think as, as far as your question on the silent counts, we always kind of base that going into a game. Right. We, we base that going into a game like, oh, we know, you know, hey, we're going to Kansas City. It's going to be loud. Uh, we got to work the silent count. And, and goodness, Philip, Philip's been 16 years. He knows the places are loud and knows the places aren't loud. And, you know, so he, he's able to help us through that process. Frank's been in the NFL, obviously, a long time as a quarterback. 
and as a coach. So he's able to say, hey, I think we need to silent count this week because of it. Um, so probably less of an emphasis this year, Bob, with the, with the, with the silent count. Um, crowd noise is definitely, in my opinion, is definitely uh, advantage to the, you know, disadvantage to the offense on the road. Um, so now, you know, so we have to, we have to make sure, you know, so, cause we have to make sure we can communicate. So it's going to be less, less, uh, less noisy there. So I think that's an advantage for us that uh, less crowd noise, we're going to be able to communicate a little bit better than what we, what we can normally at Jacksonville. You know, just to follow up I mean, the defenses have not tackled very much in the preseason, if at all, um, how much of an advantage will that give offenses throughout the league uh, yeah. with defenses that are, yeah. Yeah, no, no good question. Really good question. Um, I think that that is definitely something, right? And, and, it's, and it goes both ways, right, Bobby? I mean, it, we have to get tackled too. So that's going to be, you know, that's going to be a little bit different for us because we haven't been tackled very much as an offensive group. So, but I think that's definitely, when you talk to good defensive coordinators, which I know, uh, Jacksonville has a great defensive coordinator and coach Wash that they uh, they all they all stress the same thing hey it's about running tackling all right and for you it's about blocking and and you know getting off the tackles and but they all all the defense great def, great good defense coordinators I've been around say the same thing it's about tackling so it's definitely I know that, that most you know that they have to they have to focus on that and so I wouldn't say it's an advantage or disadvantage, just that, hey, we're going to have to get tackled and we haven't been tackled a lot and you're, y'all are going to have to tackle and y'all haven't tackled a lot. So um, definitely uh, different than how we've been practicing without the preseason. Thank you. Yep, thanks, Bob. Joel Erickson. Nick, what have you learned about um, Jonathan Taylor's personality since uh, in, just in this last month or so? Yeah, I really like, I really, it's really a pleasure being around Brown Jonathan, um, humble guy who wants to work hard, uh, who hu- works hard, humble, and, you know, really wants to be good um, and wants to be great at football. I really admire that. And so um, quiet right now. Um, I know he's probably got more around, I guess, around when I see him a little more quiet, but he's, he's, he's his, in his first year and he's learning his way, you know, he's learning his way and, and I think he's he's the type of guy right now, and this could change. Obviously, that leads by exam, leads through his leads and does through you know doing and, and through his examples on the field. You know, and when he gets a voice, I you know I see the personality that once he establishes himself, he he'll have a voice and and be able to lead because I think he's got good leadership qualities in him. Go two more, George Bremer. Coach, is there a different level of excitement or anticipation this year because there were no preseason games and seeing this first team offense together really for the first time in week one? Yeah, that's a good question, George. I was I was just – Philip, myself, and Jason Michael, our tight end coach, were just in the hallway. I'm like, gosh, were you guys, like, excited coming in here this morning? We, we always are. Shoot, we get – we have a great job. We get to coach football for a living. That, that's That's – really awesome. I'm really blessed to, to be able to do that. But there was, there was this sense of like when I was driving in and they both said, you know, without a doubt, yes. And I was driving in this morning and I just had like, almost had like butterflies in my stomach. Like it's game week, let's go. So I, yeah, I mean, I changed, I think I, I was listening to something and then I changed the radio station. Like I was going into Sunday to listen. Like I had my, I had my pregame, uh, my pregame, uh, uh, cut up or whatever you call it, what, uh, mixtape, not mixtape. I'm old. I'm showing my old, my, uh, my age right there, whatever. Um, but yeah, I was super excited this morning. You can feel the energy in, in the building. And so I, I think that a hundred percent, uh, a lot of excitement. We'll go last question. Stephen Holder. Hey, old guy, the, the word you're looking for is playlist. Playlist. <laughs> there you have it. All my right. wife is definitely making fun of me about that. <laughs> That's why I like her. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm wondering something. You've been other places, and I wonder if you can comment on this. The, the pace that you guys practice at, is it a lot different than other places? And if it is, how and, and how does that help in preparation? 
So I know that's something that you guys made a, an emphasis of this tra training camp. Like you had like shorter practices and it seemed like you were getting a lot out of them though. Yeah, we, we just know that, I mean, we just know that when you practice, when you're getting a little, you, you can't get a 1% better every day as, as Frank, as Frank says, you can't get 1% better every day if you're not practicing hundred percent. And so I think, you know, again, it, I just so much, um, so much, all, all the credit that was is with the guys that we have here and Frank, Frank's leadership. I mean, everyone believes that. And it's true. Like you, you can't get better if you're, if you're not, if you're not practicing hard. So, you know, we all have goals in this building as far as what we want this team to look like and want this, want this team to be. And if you're not willing to get 1% better every single day, you're not going to reach those goals. And so I just think it's a, you know, having the, the players are, they, they work their butts off one because they're self-motivated guys, but then, and, and, and good, and good guys. And then on top of that, Frank uh, stresses it and, and builds and, and has built the culture to say, Hey, this is how we practice. So it's just, you know, being year three into this, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's been, it's been great. I mean, it's, it's, it is different than other places. You just, other places don't practice. And, you know, I'm sure there's some, I said, as far as the places I've been, not every place is practice. The, we haven't, we didn't practice as hard as we do here. And you can just see that. And you see that throughout the year, cause you just see guys develop and get better. Um, so again, testament to Frank and the culture he is, he's established and the players.